Let's have a look at the setup for this moody cinematic shot and find out why we used fill light for something that looks this dark. Filling in your shadows is important when shooting with any camera. Cameras don't see light the same way we do, and even a camera with a larger dynamic range can struggle to achieve a realistic look when lighting with high contrast ratios. Fill light can help to reduce that contrast and fit the dynamic range of the scene into the dynamic range of the camera, which helps toward achieving a more naturalistic look in our shadows that we typically see with our own eyes. There are many aspects to an image that can be considered cinematic, and controlled light with details in the highlights and the shadows is one aspect of this. To demonstrate how important fill light can be in achieving a cinematic look, and how this can be achieved on most any camera, we're going to shoot this on a Nikon D800, a DSLR that was released over 8 years ago, and only shoots in compressed 8-bit video in H.264. We'll also be using an older Nikon 50mm 1.8 lens. So here's our scene, lit with only natural light. In front of our subject is a large bay of windows, spilling into the room in all directions, which is making our scene look very flat and uncontrolled. We'd like the room to be darker, but with our subject still appearing to be lit by a large window. So simply closing our curtains a little to try and achieve this isn't going to work. Whilst we may have a little more control over our light than before, our light source is too small, we still have too much light spilling around, and the limitations of our camera are really starting to show, with a lack of detail in the shadows. This is where we start to consider bringing in some lighting to get the look we're after. We want a large window lighting our subject, but we also want to keep the rest of our room dark to retain the mood. To achieve this, we can utilise the inverse square law. So we set up a large octobox to replicate our large window. By placing this close to our subject, we have a quick fall off into shadow on his face, maintaining our darker mood and we combined this close light to subject distance with the octobox angled slightly past our subject. Positioning our key light in this way, we've managed to keep the majority of the light off of the background, just allowing for some of the spill from the octobox to add a little shape. Trying to remove the spill entirely would look a lot more unrealistic. Without the small splashes of light on the back wall, our subject would be lit by a seemingly obvious artificial source of light in a dark void. So we could just leave this as a one light setup. It's moody, it's dark, it's basically what we wanted to achieve. But let's see what happens if we add a fill light into our scene. Now it's quite subtle, with our fill light on a much lower power output than our key. But with the fill light, we were able to dig into those shadows and show more detail. And because we kept our contrast ratio high, we've maintained our moody directional lighting. Only now we have a much richer image that fits more comfortably into our camera's dynamic range. This makes our image feel more cinematic, as we have controlled, stylistic looking lighting, but with more natural looking shadows. For our fill light, we used the Laufus Lantern Softbox. Lantern softboxes like these spread light evenly over a decently sized area, and can work really well for things like top light and fill light. Our Laufus Lantern, used in this video, is easy to set up, has a Bowens mount which fits nearly all single chip LED lighting units like aperture, 
Godox and Nanlite, and has a really nice light spread, making it a great tool for our fill light in this video. We place the lantern high up, on the same side of the camera as our key light. This way, we minimised any opposing shadows that might have occurred if we put the fill light on the opposite side of the key and the other side of the camera, which would have unbalanced the intended directionality of our window light. Placing the lantern up high, we were able to avoid extra catch lights in the eyes from the fill, so as not to subtly complicate the lighting in the scene and have it still appear as if all the light is coming from our window. Because the lantern spills light everywhere, we're not only filling in our shadows with the light from the lantern itself, but also the bounce coming from the ceiling and walls. All of these elements combine toward making our fill light invisible in the scene, yet still giving exposure to our shadows, which in turn subtly implies that the detail we can see in the shadows is naturally there, as a byproduct of our window light spilling around the room. This also hides our older, less capable camera's weaknesses in dynamic range, as we've given the camera enough light to process a natural looking image, whilst retaining contrast. Another plus to adding fill light to a darker image with high contrast ratios is the flexibility it affords you in post. By exposing our image a little to the right, or exposing our image a little lighter than we intend the final scene to look, you have more information in the image to push and pull the look to darker or lighter without breaking the limitations of the codec or dynamic range. You can see that even if we pull our shadows right down to match the darkness of the previous shot that didn't have fill light, we're still able to retain more shadow detail as we've given the camera sensor the necessary information with the fill light. It's worth noting that we've taken a look at a higher contrast ratio in this video, but in future videos we may take a look at some different ratios. Utilising fill light in your lighting is a great way to get more out of your image when using less capable cameras but can help to improve the level of detail and richness in your image on any camera system, even in dark, moody scenes, creating a more cinematic look to your work. Don't forget, you can still get my 21 minute colour grading tutorial from my website for just £8, which details the process of creating two cinematic looks in DaVinci Resolve, and includes practice DNG files so you can grade along with the video. head over to www.robellisscinematography.com forward slash downloads to grab the video.